when you're watching the most awaited Malayalam film, That Too Late, which has been in the works for over 16 years, leads to a lot of hype. And it doesn't take much for it to become overhyped. Now, where does this film lie? Let's talk about it. Hello guys, I'm Nona Prince and today we're talking about the latest Malayalam film, Aru Jivitam or The Goat Life, written and directed by Blessy. A disclaimer, I have not read the book. I don't know the story, but I know a lot of behind the scenes. What all happened in these 16 years when they were making this film, the things they went through during the pandemic, and this film had a buzz since that first look trailer got leaked. Now it's sad that being such a big film, it had to face a lot of subtitle issues that many places outside Kela where the film was sent, it wasn't playing with subtitles. But they fixed that in few days. That's definitely an issue I am very used to. Now when I say the film was playing without subtitles, that means there were no subtitles for the Malayalam dialogues also. Because you know there was this idea that in the film, whenever someone's speaking in Arabic, there will be no subtitles because the character doesn't know what other people are saying and the makers wanted to give the same feeling to the audience that even they don't know what, what's happening. But I guess that was not working because the version I saw had subtitles throughout. Every word spoken had a subtitle and there were extra subtitles both in English and in Malayalam for Arabic. When you know so much about the film and what happened behind the scenes even before the film comes out, it definitely tames your perspective towards it. You definitely develop a bias and I think that's the point. That's why you know so many films market themselves using this behind the scenes. Of of course, in the case of the goat life, they actually went through a lot and it being based on true life, they documented their process and then used it for marketing because coincidentally it actually matched with what the film is about. But the important thing is to have an objective view of the film, irrespective of what happened behind the scenes, how well does the film work on its own? And that does not mean that you're dismissing the struggle and the effort that went behind making it. Now the book, which this film is based on, written by Benny Amin, has admitted that this film is not just based on the true experience experiences of Najib, but he himself has added some fictional elements to make it a strong narrative, to add layers to it. And when you're adapting something like that, it's not about what you are adapting, but how you're doing it. The filmmaking choices you go for this audiovisual medium. And certain choices really work for the film, but some don't. And that's why there are some best moments and then some which you don't really connect to that well. First, talking about the best parts, cinematography was definitely one. The film is shot beautifully, but the star of the film film is Prithviraj Sukumar. It was a one-man show all out. And that was a given. Considering the type of film it is, you have to have a great performance by your lead actor for the narrative to work. It all depends on that. He has to shoulder the film. But the way Prithviraj did it, that's what shocked me. I knew he was a good actor, but the way he immersed himself in this character is praiseworthy. I never saw Prithviraj on the screen. I only saw Najib every time from the first frame to the last frame. And the whole transformation he goes through, it never feels like a gimmick. The look he has throughout the film, you have to give the credit to the costume department, the makeup artist. People who maintain the continuity, it was so good. In one scene, he has to feed the camels. And the scene after that, away from that location, when you get a close-up, you can see those dry grass on his hand. That much attention to detail was there. The tan on his skin, how rough it was getting, his teeth, his lips, the beard, the hair, all of it is so well maintained that it adds to the performance. And Prithviraj really had to step up because it was not just about struggling in the desert, but to maintain a character throughout this journey. We first see him with Inno Sins. Then that turns into frustration. The struggle he goes through, how it drains him out. He starts to shake. He starts to stammer. He's unable to frame sentences, speak the words clearly. He's resorting to just making noises and sounds. Just looking at him, you can tell he just drained out of energy. And there's a lot of depth given to his character. There are a lot of layers there. The film is called The Goat Life. Why is that? Because he's the goat who has been sacrificed, who had to leave his homeland to come to, you know, another country and work there. And as as the fate has it, he ends up becoming a slave. His job is to look after the goats. First, he doesn't understand them, but slowly over time, he becomes one of them. He ends up in that cycle, becoming a successor to that old man. And slowly, because he doesn't have any connection to his family, to his friends, to anyone who knows him, even to his culture, his people, his language, he starts to lose sense of time, something we saw in Brahmayugam also. And when that happens, you start to lose your identity. You become 
a goat those memories which make you starts to fade away and there was this beautiful scene you know putting emphasis on this when all the goats are getting trimmed we see him trying to you know cut his beard trying to get back his old form which he is starting to lose as the time passes and even when he gets the opportunity to leave to run away from this place it's bitter sweet for him because he has developed a connection with this place with these animals and before leaving he feeds all of them the best part of the film for me is everything we see in the madrasa and we see his journey in the beginning he desires comfort but then he has to sleep on the ground there is no pillow he cannot sleep inside a tent he cannot use water during a dump and in general from the start we feel the absence of water the film makes you feel the lack of it the first time we see him drink water is from a tap then after ages when no one is around he gets to take a bath and when that water is flowing over him it's hurting him he's shouting because his skin is not used to it anymore then on their run when they reach that oasis he cannot drink all of that just drops from there the glass bottle and then when he's rescued in the car he drinks from a packaged water bottle and you see the difference of abundance versus scarcity in the flashbacks it's always full of water there's excess of it be it the river be it the rain he's always covered with moisture compare that to this desert where every drop is valuable and that itself is a message for our future now coming to the things that didn't work for me that well the length of the film is definitely something you feel pacing feels off but there are many factors why that happens the first is the flashbacks now i don't know how it all you know happens in the book but in the film they made a choice that we start the film with najib arriving in this place and we end by him leaving we don't see him anywhere else except the flashback now it would have been interesting to see how the film would unfold if there were no flashbacks at all we only hear about these people about his life in india but we do get two flashbacks you know explaining how he reached here and then over that we get a whole song which i felt was not needed the moment that song came in with that you know interesting transition i felt it feels out of place already i think the song could have been used for you know a promo or a, you know marketing material because you already showed us two flashback in that flashback you covered the whole story of him how he reached here and now we are getting this song where you are showing how they are in love and it also has the back story of them getting married and you know all those moments which you know later never comes back in the film he loves his wife and it was quite established in the first two flashback itself but now to get a whole song just about how in love they are it just feels repetitive and you know it just drags along you're just delaying the main part of what we all you know came to see the film for i want to be present with him in the desert and what's happening with him now but cutting away for a long period it's impacting the tension the film is building and i understand the need of flashback that you want to establish the character his family what he's missing out here but i feel like if you're going there then also show us them meeting again at the end but we don't get it see overall the film stays very realistic there are no motivational moments for the hero you know i have to go home for my wife for my mother for my kid there are no quick flashes of his family before he's going to die but you know it motivates him there's nothing like this we just see him struggling and trying to survive so you know i have my doubts if the flashbacks really help the film or not what do you think let me know the second point is that the protagonist of the film is najib we are following his journey from the start to the end it's him now when we begin the film there are two characters but then there is just najib and whenever the film is just focused on him those are actually the best moments but when the escape happens suddenly we are following three characters now and you don't really have enough connection with the other two people as you have for najib but because there are three of them the focus is shifting now they use hakim's character you know to show how the desert can impact someone the struggles he's going through is actually a warning that this can happen to a main character also it's a way of providing information to the audience but it just doesn't do enough it becomes repetitive oh they have no water they are just struggling they are falling cut to the next day the same thing is happening cut to the next day the same thing is happening he has lost his mind but now they are carrying him again he loses his mind and then you know things happen and with ibrahim qadri's character also you try to create some mystery with him you really don't know that why nothing is happening to him why he is not struggling much and later in the film you get a reveal about him also but that was still very unsure i didn't fully understand what was happening with that character point 3 is that you know the desert i felt wasn't a character in the film the film never uses that like you know how in manjumal boys the caves the guna caves is a character in itself and i feel this film could have benefited making the desert also a character is it a friend of najib or a foe maybe we could have seen multiple escape attempts by him with a desert 
wizard stopped but again it comes to you know the source material what's in the book and i'm sure they would want to be 100% accurate to that instead of adding something now number 4 is background music like it was good the music was good but the use of it was a bit overdone i am personally someone who don't really mind over use of you know bgm being really loud you get at every point but in this film i did feel it was done too much maybe they could have you know brought it a bit back there are many places where the background music you know started playing few seconds before something big happened on the screen and of course that can be a creative choice it's like giving the audience a warning something's going to happen but i desired you know more silence in the film especially in the second half where i think the music just you know keep going one bgm ended the second one started playing number 5 is you know the climax i felt was kind of underwhelming they did try something there but it didn't work because at the end we are in the moment of victory that finally he made it he's finally safe now he can go home but oh wait there's a twist it's not over yet he may end up going back to that place of course somewhere you know it will not happen you know the behind the scenes story of course he made it back but at that time in the movie you are hooked but then the film does this thing which i didn't like at all they played an imaginary scenario in najib's head that he's caught and he'll be taken back and that made that moment very ordinary why is that because you show us in his imagination that he's caught and will be taken back but then that doesn't happen you suffer the expectation and the revelation happens to najib that he was never supposed to go there it was a mistake or a intended mistake but what happen here is that the moment you show a imaginary scene that something will happen that will never happen actually that's a classic trait we have seen in many films so you already undercut the tension now you know something else will happen he'll not be caught if that imaginary sequence is cut out you don't know what's going to happen you keep guessing and then the subversion happens now i've been told that you know a lot of scenes were cut out especially the jail sequences because they were very disturbing and when the film gets over you feel you know that there was a lot of struggle and by the end when he gets rescued suddenly everything happens quickly so you feel a bit of rush there one more thing i need to mention is a very small thing but something you have to look into you should know this at the last frame of the film where you look at najib going into the plane there's a text written in malayalam there and i'm like you had credit both in english and malayalam mix and you know you're putting this film out for a lot of people to watch not just kerala audience then why not have you know a translation of that in english also it's a very small detail you know but something to note because that was not subtitled so i have no idea what was written there see overall the journey the film takes you is worth experiencing now the question is is the film really overhyped and i feel whenever some film is so talked about somewhere or the other people will find faults and say oh you overhyped the film it's not that special so they'll all Always be this back and forth. But what I can say is the film is worth the 16 years of wait, even if it's not perfect. But in this video, I talked about the Malayalam legend who's doing everything perfect. Check out why no one can be like Mamuti. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you next time.